Welcome to Blue Water Supermap, available exclusively from sst-offshore.com. In this episode, we're going to be discussing satellite data. So we're going to come up into our, our Layers tab at the top, and we're going to click on Satellite. On the left, we have Sea Surface Temperature. In the middle, we have Chlorophyll. On the right, we have Imagery. Let's start with the Sea Surface Temperature satellite data. We have three different satellites available here. We have the MODIS SST, the GEOS SST, and the AVHRR SST. We're going to start with the MODIS here. We're going to single click, single left click in the MODIS box. You'll notice over here on the right we have a drop down menu that has thumbnails of all of the data that's currently available for this particular satellite. As we roll down through these, you'll notice some of them have lots of data some of them have no data. Now why is that? Well we cover a very large area. We cover from Maine all the way around to Texas and some of the areas aren't uh, overpassed with each shot of the satellite. So we have some that have overpasses in them and some that don't. That's just part of the way it works. And as you can scroll down through here you can see you know that that pattern is fairly consistent. We're going to go right back up here to the top one. This is our most recent satellite shot. You can put your mouse on top of it, or you can click all to, to get our standard uh, color ramping. And we'll wait for this to load. We know it's completely loaded when it comes back down here in the bottom left hand corner and says done. All right. Now, one of the nice things about this particular piece of software is as you move your mouse around, and look down here in the bottom left hand corner under temperature it'll give you Fahrenheit and Celsius and it'll also give you the depth of the water in that particular area so all we have to do is just move our mouse around in order to see what the temperatures are you'll watch them change down there in the temperature menu now there's a lot of other things that we can turn on with this let me go up here and click on details let's turn on our contours and then let's zoom in now we're getting all kinds of good stuff water sure is deep out there isn't it and I can see a temperature break running right along what looks to be the continental shelf right there if we put our mouse right here we'll see that the temperature is 75.5 and if we move just inshore just a little bit it's 76 so there's a half a degree temperature break right there now let me show you something else that's kinda nifty about this I'm gonna zoom us back out once again we'll wait for it to load and I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna turn the contours off and I'm gonna go back to satellite get our drop down again now watch this now before we were using the all temperature uh, image variant now I'm going to roll you down through the different temperatures that are available and this is basically for use you know in some areas it might be you know 45 degree water or 50 degree water in other areas it might be 85 so we have to make allowances for that I'm going to start off with an SST with the color ramp from 30 to 60 degrees F you're not going to see very much data here because the water in the Gulf is quite cold. Now we'll go to the 4070. We're starting to see a little bit of water. See where it's co co coming out of the, uh, the mouths of the rivers and things like this. Fifty eighty. Now we're starting to see some stuff. Isn't that a pretty shot? Look at the swirlies. Let's zoom in on one of those. Now you can really see something. That's the really nice thing about this is you need to work these these image ramps uh, up and down until you hit the temperature scale that you're really looking for and that varies whether you're you're hunting you know, 
swordfish, whether you're hunting king mackerel, as to which temperature ramp is the one that you really should be using. Let's look right here. Right here's a nice temperature break. 70.8 degrees and 74.4. See it right there? Wow, that's a really nice temperature break. I'm going to zoom in even a little closer on that. We're down to the pixel level now. 73.9 and 72. That's almost a two degree temperature break. And you can see it swirling right there. Very nice. Nice shot. All right. Let's continue on with our with our ramp display here. And I guess the point behind this is that I would encourage you to work the color ramps up and down until you, you get the area that it is that you wish to see. It's 5080. 60-90. Now, if you notice, the colors are progressively moving offshore. We're waiting for it to load here. You have to keep in mind that we're moving a lot of data here because we're not giving you just a simple image. We're giving you the actual data that's behind it. Look at the swirlings. Look at that one right there. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 75 and 76. That's a 1.3 degree temperature break right there. Let's see here. Let's take it up to the, to the end here. Here's 65 and 85. So the whole idea behind the different image ramps is so that you can see the varying uh, contrast in the waters. So as you move from cold water to warm water in the summertime, you can pick whichever color ramp best shows the features that you're looking for. If you're hunting for swordfish or if you're hunting for king mackerel, uh, we've got something for everybody. All right, the rest of the satellite data, both GEOS, AVHRR, and the three-day composite all work exactly the same way. So on each of them we have the temperature, uh, the image gradients up and down both sides. Now I have a lot of people ask, well Dave, what's the difference between the different satellites? MODIS up here is going to be your day in, day out best shot. You get fairly good resolution. You get good cloud, uh, the way that it deals with cloud cover. Uh, you know, this is probably your best day in, day out shot. The Geos down here deals with the cloud cover a whole lot better, but it's a very coarse image. If you don't have a choice of any other, then the Geos is, is an okay one to use. Uh, but the data is very coarse, you know, uh, it's, it has a lot, of, uh, a lot of area per pixel. The AVHRR here is your best when it has data. It doesn't have a very good cloud filter on it, so if there's any cloud cover around at all, you won't be able to see anything. But it has the best resolution. So if you can get an AVHRR shot, you'll get the best resolution uh, with that particular shot but the cloud cover really makes that an issue. All right, we're going to move on here. Um, we're going to move over here to the chlorophyll. It's here in the center, and I'm going to left-click one time in the box. Now, if you'll notice, we don't get a whole lot of chlorophyll data, and this is, once again, due to the satellite overpasses. I have to scroll on back here a ways.
there's one. Move over here. And here's our chlorophyll data. It works basically the exact same way that the rest of the SSTs do is you move your mouse around and you look down here at the bottom and it'll tell you what the uh, the parts per milligram are. So you can stop, stop your mouse just a moment and then move it, stop it just a moment and it'll get, give you the, the varying chlorophyll levels. Alright, let's move on to the next one. The next one is the current infrared image. Now on a small scale this is not very useful but if you take and use, you go all the way out to the global level, to the fullest extent of the map, you'll be able to see lots of kind of cool things with the uh, with the infrared image. And this is basically your your weather satellite data that you've seen on the evening news, and you can see where all the cloud cover is. Here's our current visible shot. Once again, showing you all your cloud cover. This is basically goes right along with the current infrared. Here, I'll turn them both on for you. So now we have the current infrared and the uh, the uh, the current visible. Excuse me. Here's our current water vapor. You can see the water vapor trails. And then last but not least, the modus true color. True color is, is very useful in times of bad weather so that you can pinpoint uh, areas of clear water. You know, one of the problems that we have here along the North Carolina coast are the hurricanes coming up the coast. And I can tell you that I have used this particular shot on numerous occasions to be able to find clean water uh, after the storms. Blue Water Supermap is offered exclusively by SST-Offshore.com.